By now you know that adding vectors geometrically is not easy. So the easier way is to put the vectors in a coordinate system first and then make use of simple algebra. And that is exactly what I will teach you in this lesson today. So when we put a vector in the coordinate system, we can say that the vector has two components. And what are these components? Well, one is what you can say is the shadow of the vector on X axis. That is this. And the other is its shadow on Y axis, which is this. So in more technical terms, we say the projection of the vector on X axis is the X component of the vector and the projection on the Y axis is the Y component of the vector. Remember, as of now, these are scalar values only. These are not vectors and therefore we do not put an overhead arrow. But soon we will do something that will convert them into vectors. Now, you can also have negative component values. As an example, if the vector is oriented like this, you have a positive Y component, but a negative X component. Or in this case, you can see both components are negative. So the next step is how do we find the magnitude of the component AX and AY? Well, if you use basic trigonometry and treat this as a simple triangle, you can see that here cos theta is equal to AX upon A or AX is equal to A cos theta, where A is the magnitude of vector A and theta is the angle vector A makes with the positive direction of x-axis. Now, it is important to remember, and I've said this earlier also, that angle theta is always taken as the angle the vector makes with the positive direction of x-axis as we move in the anti-clockwise direction like this. So we can say that AX is equal to A cos theta and since sine theta is equal to AY upon A, AY equals A sine theta. You can also see that A, AX and AY make a right angle triangle. So A is equal to root of AX square plus AY square. We can also find the angle theta by putting tan theta is equal to ay by ax. So let us solve a simple problem to understand what we have learned so far. And what we have here is a vector d and we need to find the x and y components of this vector. And what's given is the magnitude of vector d as 3 meters and angle alpha as 315 degrees. So you can see we have taken alpha as the angle measured from the positive direction of x-axis as we move anti-clockwise towards the vector. Also, even before we answer the question, we can make a quick observation that is the x component of vector d is positive and the y component is negative. So using the earlier equations, we can say that dx is equal to d cos alpha, which equals 3 cos of 315 degrees, which equals plus 2.1 meters, and dy equals d sine alpha, which equals 3 sine of 315 degrees, which equals minus 2.1 meters. And you can see that our answers for dx and dy components with signs, that is plus and minus, respectively, are in line with the direction we expected. Another way we could have solved the problem would have been by taking alpha as minus 45 degrees. So dx is equal to 3 cos of minus 45 degrees, which equals plus 2.1 meter, which is the same answer as we calculated earlier. And dy is equal to 3 sine minus 45 degrees, which equals minus 2.1 meters. Again, the same answer which we calculated earlier with 315 degrees. So you see alpha written as plus 315 degrees is the same as alpha written as minus 45 degrees. And you can take either angle to solve the problem. What you have to remember is that if you move in anti-clockwise direction, the angle should be taken as positive 
and if you move in clockwise direction towards a vector then it has to be taken as negative so do not make the careless mistake of taking alpha as plus 45 degrees okay let me now tell you a couple of important things that will help you save time when attempting problems particularly if you are preparing for a competitive exam and actually what follows would not only be useful for this topic but for several other topics in physics that you learn later so number 1 is radian is the preferred unit of measurement when solving vector problems and you should know that when you move one full circle you have covered 360 degrees which is equal to 2 pi radians so if you move two circles like this that would be 720 degrees or 4 pi radians and so on number 2 is if 360 degrees is 2 pi radians then 1 degree is equal to 2 pi upon 360 degrees that is 0.0175 radians so if you want to convert 40 degrees into radians the answer would be 2 pi by 360 degrees into 40 degrees that is equal to 0.7 radians alternately you can simply multiply 40 degrees with 0.0175 that equals 0.7 radians the third one is that one radian is equal to 57.14 degrees because if 2 pi radians is 360 degrees one radian is equal to 360 upon 2 pi that is 57.14 degrees number 4 is you should remember the radian equivalent of some common angles like 45 degree is equal to pi by 4 radians 60 degree is pi by 3 radians 90 degrees is pi by 2 radians 180 degree is pi radians and 270 degrees is 3 by 2 pi radians number 5 is be fully familiar with common trigonometric functions like sin cosine and tangent and also remember the values of these functions for common angles like 45 degrees 60 degrees 90 degrees etc so if you ask what is the sin of 60 degrees you should be able to tell quickly that it is root 3 by 2 or that cos 45 is 1 by root 2 and so on so let us now get on with another topic within vectors and that is unit vectors so unit vectors as the name suggests are vectors that have magnitude of 1 and point in a particular direction in fact their only purpose in life is to give direction now at first it might be a little difficult to imagine why we need unit vectors pointing in a particular direction but as we move ahead in this lesson and subsequent topics in physics we'll find that these vectors are very useful and are widely used so one of these vectors is vector i with an overhead cap like this and it is a unit vector that always points in the positive direction of x axis so you could rewrite vector i as 1i which means its magnitude is 1 and direction is i the other unit vector is j which always points in the positive direction of y axis and the third unit vector is vector k that always points in the positive direction of z axis now let us see how these unit vectors can be useful to us so let us get back to the vector a we started the lesson with and we had found its components as ax and ay but they were scalar quantities only that is they had no direction and i had told you that we will do something with them to convert them into vectors so that something is that if you multiply ax with vector i and ay with vector j they become vectors and then you can do a lot of things with them for example you can add the two vectors to give the resultant as vector a so suddenly you see that vectors i and j have helped us to express vector a as a sum of its components so we say vector a is equal to axi plus ayj so let us take another vector and try to write it in ij notation that is in this form and here 
we can see vector b has a component in x direction that has length 2 and a component in y direction that has length 3. So we can write it as b is equal to 2i plus 3j. And here is another vector c that can be written as cxi plus minus cyj or cxi minus cyj. So now we can move on to vector addition and you can do vector addition or vector subtraction geometrically as we learned in the earlier lessons but the better way of adding vectors is by putting the vectors in i j k notation and then adding them up algebraically and let us see how we can do that so say you have vector c is equal to vector a plus vector b now if this vector equation is true then whatever components we have on the right hand side should be equal to the components on the left hand side and let me explain what I just said. So let us expand the equation on both sides. We can write vector c as cxi plus cyj plus czk and similarly on the right hand side we can write axi plus ayj plus azk plus bxi plus byj plus bzk. Now Using simple algebra, we can rewrite this as cxi plus cyj plus czk is equal to ax plus bxi plus ay plus byj plus az plus bzk. Now, as I said earlier, if the components are same or equal on both sides, then cx must equal ax plus bx, cy must equal ay plus by and cz must equal az plus bz or in other words the respective scalar components should be equal on both the sides okay let us work on a problem which will help us understand this better so what you have in this problem are three vectors vector a is equal to 4.2i minus 1.5j Vector b is equal to minus 1.6i plus 2.9j and vector c is equal to minus 3.7j. And we are asked to find vector r which is the sum of these three vectors. So if you plot these vectors on a graph they would look like this. One way of adding the vectors is first find vector sum of a and b by sliding vector b over here and getting the sum which would be this. Then we add these two vectors by sliding this vector down here and getting vector r as a resultant and then we can measure the magnitude of r and the angle it makes with the x-axis using geometry and we know that this all is going to be quite time consuming. So a better way would be as follows. We write this equation as rxi plus ryj plus rzk is equal to 4.2i minus 1.5j plus minus 2.6i plus 2.9j plus minus 3.7j or rxi plus ryj plus rzk is equal to 4.2 minus 1.6 plus 0i plus minus 1.5 plus 2.9 minus 3.7j plus 0k. So what we've done is use some simple algebra to simplify the right hand side. Then scalar on both sides should be equal or Rx should equal 4.2 minus 1.6 plus 0 that equals 2.6 meters and Ry should equal minus 1.5 plus 2.9 minus 3.7 which equals minus 2.3 meters. Rz is equal to 0. And therefore, we can say R is equal to 2.6i minus 2.3j. So this becomes a vector component of R in x direction and this becomes the component in y direction. And the magnitude of vector R would be square root of 2.6 square plus minus 2.3 square that equals 3.5 meter. And the angle measured from the positive x-axis can be found as follows. Tan theta should equal minus 2.3 upon 2.6 or theta is equal to 
tan inverse of 2.3 by 2.6 which equals minus 41 degrees. So now we can say that if you have a vector a is equal to axi plus ayj then its magnitude is a is equal to root of ax squared plus ay squared and its direction is tan inverse ay upon ax. So you see how components of a vector and unit vectors help us work with vectors quite easily. But if you want to understand what is cross product and dot product of vectors, you must go through this playlist that explains the topic very nicely. Also, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and see you in the next video.